This is a Christ-centered channel. We talk of Christ. We rejoice in Christ. We preach of Christ. And we are not afraid of the hard subjects. But we engage with love. We welcome those who are watching at this time. We hope that you will comment on this video. And hit that like button. Please subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and family. May we edify and uplift one another. Now let's get this video started. So. Right, right, right. I got you. So anyway, yeah, it's yep. been busy. Just been crazy busy. I can't. Either they're working us twelve-hour days, or <laughs> which yeah. is tiring, you know. You and I try to do my best to kind of um, get prepared for these discussions, but it seems like no matter what I do, I'm not too tired just to you know. And I'll listen to scriptures and stuff like that during the week, but it's kind of like. I just don't have the energy to, 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 to get stuff. And I think, you know, and I, and I noticed, you know, anytime that I go to the pulpit for my testimony, uh, it, you would, I probably talk for three or four days without going, without taking a breath. My wife says you talk for two hours without even taking a, a breath, don't you? And then, uh, but seems like I'm cut short by the spirit saying, you, that's enough you know you, you there's so many you know I, I i i try to allow the spirit to speak through me and not for me to in, in that in that situation you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so and, and 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 i think for me and i'm speaking for myself and my own uh understanding is the lord really he does a lot to uh to to guide me to enable me and he's like you know aj you could be over prepared and 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 this would it wouldn't be a discussion anymore you just be over prepared and i think the challenges that i have during my life you know with work and all that creates a better atmosphere here so i'm not you know have all this stuff you know trying to cram everything all into to the discussion but i'm kind of coming from a plain uh, from a, 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 a from a from just the, the average memory kind of concept more than that but I'm just saying it, it, instead of trying to you know like I said overly prepare and have all this stuff it's more of a discussion on what I understand as a human being versus mm -hmm. trying to take other buddy everybody else's words and uh I was I, I'm hoping people show up, but uh, I I had a, a an opportunity about three or four times, four times I believe, to have uh, discussions with Daniel Peterson in person. Who is this? Daniel Peterson. Who is who is Daniel Peterson? He was the uh, dean of uh, ancient uh, Near Eastern studies in uh, at BYU. He's an apologist for the church. Mm, okay. And uh, so a very learned man. Um, he has the Interpreter Foundation. He was uh, part of the far, uh, Fair Mormon uh, or Farms. Uh, and so he's a, a prodigy of uh, Hugh Nibley. Okay. So, but when when I talked to him, I told him that I was not book smart. He says, that's an advantage, not a disadvantage. <laughs> Being book smart. Yeah, because sometimes we over, or there's, we, uh, over uh, uh, read, or it, some people can can do this without being book smart, and then some people have to have a book in order to engage. And I think I, and like I told you, you know, whenever I was going to court and I had to do uh, defend myself and to uh, um, uh, be my own, uh, represent my own my own behalf uh it went quite well you know because i was able to uh adapt 
and to to uh, uh, adapt to the situation quite well. It was, it was funny sometimes. It was there was a time there was one we had the uh, one of the CPS uh, 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 persons up on the stand and and I went and uh, asked a question and then they objected to my question. I said, "Okay, fine." I said, "Okay, let's take a hypothetical." And I asked the very same question. And the and the, uh, and the judge allowed me to ask that hypothetical question. And and I was able to get the answer out of the uh, the CPS witness uh that I wanted I intended to get in the first place. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We have a signature. Um, do we? <laughs> what do you think? It's as close as they can get. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. What what brand is yours? What I is don't this? know. I, we got this second hand. And... See, mine says it's a lazy boy right there. See it? Oh, okay. Did you just have one of those on it? No, it doesn't. Well, so I used to have one that didn't have lazy boy on it, but they sell these uh, at Costco. I'm yeah, sure I, I, I think I need to get a new chair. I had to, in order to keep this thing up high, I had to drill a hole through the piston and. <laughs> put a bolt through it but anyway so like i said i was able to really navigate through that situation quite uh quite well and, and uh even the uh even the the judge was one of her uh the first setting uh is like it, it the, he used the word and it's a whatever i can't remember exactly but it was just you you did an exemplary job in my in my courtroom, you know, mm-hmm. and then he blasted after I got done with him with the uh, with that. Well, actually, it was kind of a, a, an odd thing. My lawyer, uh, see, I had one lawyer that was a, a bulldog. He was former Marine. He was on it. He was real good, you know, and I could trust him. Then they were supposed to have this trial come up. And it was a re- reunification trial for for me and my boy. And um, and uh, they set me up with a new lawyer that uh, didn't have the the bite in her. Okay. And so I'm they we've got the person a person up there that would really that was need to be challenged about his his uh, objective ob- objection or objective in the whole thing. And um, I kept on saying, hey, I, I, I lean up to her, say, can you ask this question? Would you ask this question, please? Would you? No, I can ask this question. No. And then by that night, I talked to my, because I told my wife and I told the lawyers, I said, I don't need a lawyer. My wife has a lawyer. He can take care of all the technical stuff. I can deal with the other part. I don't need a lawyer. But they never conceded that point until after we went through that first trial because then we were having closing arguments the next day. And I was like, I talked to my wife. I said, I'm going to do my own closing argument. And um, and uh, so, and she was like, yeah, you need to. And uh, so I went to, um, uh, I called my lawyer up and she says, well, you'll have to release, my, release me from my uh, obligation. I said, and I talked to my wife. She says, yeah, I'll do that. So the next day, I had like eight, ten pages written out, you know, uh, on the computer, and and okay. I and I um, so everybody went before me, and so I, when they said something, I was able to object to a, whatever their statement was, and it was ruled in my favor and stuff like that. And then, as I'm giving my twenty minute uh, closing arguments, I was able to also grab from their statements and create uh, 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 an uh, objection to what they were saying. And then I would continue on. So I was that living, but it was pretty funny. At the end of that, the judge uh, told CBS, you guys have done a horrible job in managing this situation. <laughs> and, uh, and so, like I said, I, uh, it was something quite a, 
quite an experience. But uh, but the boy that uh, we were dealing with, he uh, he actually came back, had a kumbaya with us. So it took a while, but you know, and then he left again. He has a he has a mental disorder that doesn't allow him to to be relatable sometimes. And so really? it, it, and that mental disorder in the, in the world, man, it's really running rampant. It's just crazy how much, how hard, how, how many people have mental disorders anymore. It used to not be like this, Paul, you know, I'm old enough. I'm 50, 58 years old almost. And there was never this kind of widespread mental illness throughout, you know, it was very small set. Jerry, do you agree with that? I am here. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Jerry, you know I mean? is that right? Is 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 the mental illness the situation in today's world a lot different than it was when we were kids? Oh yeah. Oh yes. It's crazy. So, isn't it? so much. You're talking about uh, for for kill for kids as well. All the well, way. Up. All the way. Know, up. And Family. adults, I guess, too. Uh, you know what's happening? They're putting they're putting people on a lot of medications. I think that's that's doing it. There's a lot of reasons that's happening, but it it, it definitely right. does. But do even that. there's a lot of children that parents are putting them on all kinds of medications because of things that the doctor says they have, and I think that just the continuing dosing, giving to giving into this dosing over over the years can just can just do something to your mind i i'm, I'm going to get into it whenever we go to our discussion but i think if you look at the dynamics of and i'm going to pick on the females okay there jerry that's all right <laughs> so when you have <laughs> so when you i stand up there you go it's not it's not to pick on you it's it's just to, to point out this the the vessel in which the child is born from it, it makes a lot of difference of how your children come to uh, come to the full maturity in a in a sense that and I don't want to get into what I'm going to say there but it seems to dynamically if you look at the 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 eagerness or the the the, the almost like forced uh situation that females are in right now uh being in a position where they they feel like they have to uh compete in a man's world you take away the femininity fem, 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 the the caring part of a human being and you shove that all aside just because you want to feel masculine and that develops within the children also and they get confused because they're not sure what how they fit in the world anymore. Nobody's teaching them by by example on how they fit in the world uh, these days. And I think just like I said, you think about all the situations that women are trying to compete in, and and sending women to war, sending having women in uh, on the front lines of of of. Uh, uh, in the uh, police, uh, being a police officer or anything like that, these are not you. These are not normal situations for the female consciousness, especially if they come from a world that teaches them that they're supposed to be loving, caring, and nurturing of the human being, and not trying to destroy it. And that can that completely. And I'm recording this, so I'm going to probably put some of this stuff on. I think you know it's important uh, on a different video, separate from our discussion. But you look at that. You look at that, and how that masculinity has become a part of the the dynamic of the the, the house anymore, and how it's it's carrying. Like I said, there's no more. There's no can a female be a police officer or in, in the military on the front lines and be still living and nurturing in the home. I would say, it's, to me, it's impossible. I don't think you can. Mm -hmm. Jerry, am I right or wrong on that? 
<laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I've never had to compete in a man's world. <laughs> um, I haven't. So got married. We had our children. I went back and got my college degree and began teaching as an elementary school teacher. You're, uh, the front lines. You're battling right there. <laughs> so I haven't had to. Um, I grew up at well, of course, I was born in 1947. Okay. So I grew up in the 50s and the 60s, of course. Our children were born in the 70s. And I noticed a big change in the 70s. 70s were a time of, well, so were the 60s, of rebellion. Yeah. Um, society just seemed to fall apart. Uh, divorces, children in single home, single parent homes. I have friends whose children don't even speak to them. And it's mm -hmm. very little respect for parents at all. Um, I don't know how to answer that. AJ, because I haven't had to do it. Right, right, and I I wouldn't expect you to. And yeah. uh, you 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 have to be you. Know, I'd have to ask somebody that actually is was in that situation and how they navigated that situation. That's like I said, because when you look at look at uh, I had a I had a, a great great uncle who was uh, on the shores of Normandy, and he was a straight edge. I Meaning he didn't drink or do anything. When he went into the military and when he came out, he couldn't put the stopper back in the bottle because it changed him that much. It was that so much trauma. And you can't tell me that, you know, that women can't, you know, uh, can survive. If a man who is uh, somewhat disconnected from feelings in a way, if if a man can't. Uh, overcome those uh, times uh, or that that situation. Women would still it would fall right into that same category. Yeah. You know? Well, I will tell you this. I don't know that how many women would admit to this, but I think what we want women want we want a man to lead gently, not demand us to do yeah. this and that, to listen to us. Protect us and provide for us. I don't think you're gonna. Too many women will admit that, but that is what we want. Yeah, I appreciate that understanding, and and because we, like I said, as, as a male species, we have no idea what women want most of the time, but uh, we try. We try, no doubt. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> we have girly men now. So yeah. many men who are not men. Yeah. Uh, they they don't seem to know how to um, manage their families. They they're they're lost in a lot of ways. So the women have to take over if they don't have a man that they can um, rely on. Then they do have to. They've got children they have to take care of. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mess <laughs> you know I, oh, I, 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 I i'm i know that you guys don't agree with the temple but i'm going to say where i got my inspiration from is in the temple i i learned something valuable about uh the family structure uh it uh, the the male species cannot if he's smart intelligent i had to learn this through experience i tried to force everybody to bend to my will at one time and then i changed but the the male species is supposed to be a guide and a lead and 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 and, and basically out in front of the family uh setting or uh, uh blazing the trail for them and the wife is to be alongside him 
who who uh, and the children will follow after the, the 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 mother more than the father because they they have a special bond with the mother because of the, the process of uh, uh, in the process of pregnancy and 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 nurturing that way. So if if the man is doing his part, he's out in front, uh, and he's also listening to his wife. Uh, and 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 that and that dynamic where, hey, children are getting out of line. Hey, you know, or I'm feeling uncomfortable about this situation and the path we're we're going. And he's then he's counseling with her, and giving her just as much voice as. But basically, he's really not supposed to force anybody down the path. He's supposed to just lead it, lead them to uh, on a path that is uh, that. Is welcoming, you know what I mean? Does there are I don't think many men like that. What's that? I don't think there are too many men like that. Yeah. Well, um, it's, a, it's a learned process on my part because I I came from a broken home, so I had to learn, you know, that process. I had to destroy one family to create a whole new family so that I could be a right thinking man. So. It, because I didn't have that uh, that guide in the beginning, I've had to I had to struggle first to to figure all that out, and I think that's what's happened in a lot of our society is the guides the the we're no longer is the parenting uh, we're seeing too many mistakes in our households because of bad parenting that came before that a lot of times. So anyway. Yeah, it also happens a lot when when God is not being taught in the house. And yeah. other you things. should have said the right God there, Paul. Come on. <laughs> so when again, when people's precedence is not Jesus and it's other things in the household, those things become more important and therefore priorities go out of whack at that point. And you're not, you can't be gentle with your spouse if you're not living for Jesus. That, that's my thinking. Absolutely. Uh, you're always going to have some sort of addiction. You're going to always have some sort of bias that, that is causing you to, to sin. And you're not going to be able to take care of that unless you have God in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I feel like in the house, the commandment, honor their father and their mother is not being obeyed a lot of the times now, especially in our society. Um, where it's now all about pride. It's all about you becoming the person you want to be, no matter what your parents say, right? No, 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 no matter how your upbringing is, you become the person that you feel like you should be and ignore the teachings of your parents. And sometimes the side is towards the, towards the mother more, and other times it's more towards the father. But again, it should be equal when it comes to children. Mm -hmm. I got uh, something to say about that, but I had a question on that. Uh, and we'll get started at 7.30, no, no matter what. Um, whenever, again, I come from a broken home. Dad was alcoholic. My mom had less feelings for the children than you would think that she's going to be. <laughs> so <laughs> when you say that to honor your mother when it when it talks about honoring your mother and father if they're not honoring god then then how and you know that they're not honoring god then how do you uh fulfill that commandment it, well you instill those teachings about god from a very young age because if you try to do it at a at a later age it's that much more difficult right but do, i don't but you didn't i i'm not debating i'm trying to but ask. let's say they haven't been taught and how do you now instill those teachings in them uh, as they're now older well i would say it helps just by saying hey we're going to church this weekend and we put them in a class where they can learn i was talking about i'm talking about in my situation where my mom and dad were not ideal if I honored their wishes, my dad was trying to get me to go in and 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 be with other women and 
as many women as I could and drink and smoke and fight in bars and everything else. If I would have honored his ways, then there's no way I could have honored God. That's true. So, I mean, it, I think the, one of the things that I've heard, and I love this idea, is to bring honor to your mom and dad would be the better phrasing of that. Because when they, even though that they have fallen out or fallen off the, uh, uh, the path of God, as a child, you can still bring honor to your family honor to your mom and dad, no matter what their situation is. I think that uh, in a way that fits more into uh, honoring God first in our lives. And then that, then th what happens equally with that is to also bring honor to your mom and dad, you know, and I, and in that situation, because I live that situation, uh, I is it pleases my dad or well, who's deceased now, but it pleased my dad and my um, and my mom who still is that I am doing well. I am bringing honor to their name, no matter how that situation looked, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's, so anyway, 